What's up everyone? So this is gonna be my first video after starting the small account challenge and I'm gonna give you guys a little update on how it's going and uh, some of the things that you know that I've done in the first I'd say 10 days so two weeks trading this account to cause myself to have lost $420 in the account after starting up nicely after the first two days I made I mean around $300 and it was pretty good and I think uh, there's four things that that happened after that that caused in like the next eight days I had a drawdown in the account or I lost some money and then made it back and a little bit more and then I had I'd say two trades that caused my account to move overall there was two bad trades that brought the account down to be in the red about four hundred and twenty dollars so I want to start off with the f the first thing. There's so there's four things that I'm doing wrong, I would say, and that uh, I noticed because I'm I like to be very self aware in my trading, especially when it's not going so well. I really think about what I'm doing wrong and try to put in some kind of plan to prevent myself from doing this. Because if you in trading, you always have to be self-analyzing and what you're doing, and when when it's working, when it's not working, and you have to do more of the things that are helping you make money. I know it's very simple, and it's definitely not easy to do because most of trading is going to be in your head. It's almost, I would say, eight people say 80% mental. I say it's more like 90%, if not almost the whole thing, um, because you can anyone can make money trading, but it, it's really like how how you are as a person mentally like emotionally can you handle making money you know because as you make money your emotions change you get overconfident you get a little bit silly maybe on your position sizing you just enter anywhere and as a when you lose I mean it works the same way you might you know get mentally frustrated at yourself causing yourself to dig the hole deeper and make poor decisions you know there's a constant balance between being overconfident and having so there's like it's like really fear and greed controlling everything so the, and it, th this making a video like this is actually pretty hard for me because I'm admitting to you guys that I failed like I have some failures that I'm talking to you guys about and it's very hard for I think anyone to admit that and but I like I said I wanted to be transparent you know if I even if I blow the account up which I really don't think I will because I've been here before I've I've been down on accounts before. Not I mean this isn't that much money. Four hundred bucks is really nothing trading. That's one really good trade. One one or two really good trades, and you're back in the green, no problem. As long as you you approach it um, in a focused, patient type way, and only take the trades that you see, you know, that have good reward with the risk you're going to take. So with that. With those, with that said, I want to jump into. So there's four things. Let's start off with the first one: lack of focus. And I can just tell you that within those seven, eight days where I my trading was not good at all, I was not waking up on time. I was not preparing myself. So I would say lack of focus and lack of preparation. I I wasn't. You know, listening to my alarm clock, I wasn't getting up at 5.30 when I was supposed to, jumping out of the bed, waking up, doing my normal morning routine, you know, saying my affirmations, getting ready for the day, you know, checking out the market, give myself 15 minutes to collect my thoughts before deciding just to enter a trade randomly. And um, that's, that's like a huge thing. You have to be super in tune with, you know, in the market and see what's going on. When you wake up, you got to see if there's any news that came out. You got to chart the, the price action overnight, you know, with like fibs, trend lines, see, see where the levels are, you know, where the ranges are for where you could buy or sell. You know, you don't want to enter into the middle of the range, which is what I did a few times, which was not a good idea. And um, that, that's really it, you know, and then, and then this, and this actually, that one problem led into these other problems, or well, really the second one, which is trading from my cell phone and that I mean you can do it successfully but 
when you're not focused, you're kind of just relying, you're looking at your phone, you wake up and that's the first thing most people look at and it's in my hand and I'm looking at the chart, I have Thinkorswim on my phone, I'm looking at you know what the price is doing and I don't really have the full platform in front of me, I don't know what all the markets are, have done overnight, I don't know what the longer time frames look like next to the shorter time frames, I'm just flipping back and forth and jumping into a trade just because you know uh, just to just to do it, you know, maybe maybe I can get like a point or two points off off this scalp right here and Like I said it most of the time like when you wake up I mean you might have already missed the move overnight So you might be like oh, I need to get in I need to make something you know and uh, Ends up not working that way. So the best thing for me to do now is either plan the trade overnight and set it up and let it work don't uh, and when I wake up, wake up on time, and uh, don't take a trade unless it's around your levels. After you analyze what the market has done overnight, you know you want to give yourself time to prepare. And then the uh, third and fourth thing. Um, well, the third one is actually. Let me check. It's behind me. <laughs> um, of course. This goes in, I mean, it's, it's like when one thing happens, it's it all goes down. It, it's kind of like a domino effect in trading. Once you have lack of focus, you start doing stupid things like trading from your phone. You know, I call it shooting from the hip. And then this led into the third problem, which was having poor entries and stop placements. Well, your stop placement shouldn't be an issue if you have good entries, but sometimes when you place your stop, your stop might be, you might not be risking what you said you would risk because of loss aversion or you just think maybe it will, price won't go there. So for example, I had one trade, it was actually on Friday, had an order, I was long at like 18, it was actually Thursday evening going to the Asia open, Asian opening around 6 p.m. my time, and some in California, and I only gave it a six tick stop. Should have gave it two points, like I say I should always do on the trades. You know, give it at least a $100 risk per contract, and literally got stopped out at the low of day, and it U-turned and went up. I mean, you saw when the market closed, I was long around 26, or 29.18.75, and I got stopped out literally at the low, of Friday, I mean Friday's candle, and it, it went up after that, hit my target, and it actually went high, even higher. So it was like a six to seven point trade with as soon as I got stopped out. And you can imagine how frustrating that is. You lose $75 when you could have made four or five times that. So, I mean, stop placements, I mean, sticking to your risk, whatever you say you're gonna risk, risk that amount. And then the entries, um, I've got to be more patient. There's numerous times when I, after I, after the fact that I got stopped out on a trade, it didn't work, and I did. I reanalyzed the chart, drew the fibs that I didn't have before, like did all the preparation work after the fact. You know, bad idea, but I had to do, had to learn why I was wrong, where I should have actually entered, and. All according to my plan and what I charted after that, I would have got in a trade almost on to like the low of a 15 minute candle or something, could have got wicked in and had maybe like two ticks of heat and the trade would have been very successful. You know, so in reality, like the trade, my account shouldn't be down as at all. It should actually be up decently. So because of these four things that I'm mentioning, or the fourth one, I'll mention in a second, but these three things I said so far. They're, I would say they're almost all mental mistakes, you know. Um, just you gotta stop yourself and have, I think I'm gonna create a checklist when I get into, before I get into a trade, I'll probably create some kind of check boxes that I have to check before I can actually hit that button and uh, put a live order out there. And then the fourth, the fourth thing is actually one of the main reasons why the account is down. I mean, it's not, I didn't have a lot of losing trades, it was, I think two trades that caused the account, mainly one, that caused the account to draw down more than it should have, and that was a revenge trade and breaking a rule, right? And um, broke two rules actually. Revenge traded after getting stopped out, 
entered the trade right back in because I felt like I was right and it was an instant loser although I mean eventually you turned but at the timing was just not right so I, what I should have done like I tell you guys tell myself as I have to walk away and come back in 15 minutes or, you know or even 10 minutes something just walk away from the screen come back and reanalyze what just happened you know because timing is everything along with like a price level once it gets there it has to line up you know there are there's time frames in which you can trade you know to to get to align with your entry you know based on how the market moves but um, revenge trading that and end up breaking uh, revenge trading rule entering a trade as soon as I got stopped out and losing again and broke the max daily loss by $50 so I ended up being a $300 loss day instead of 200 I think 250 is what I keep it to so in which I actually implemented hard stop limits or loss limits on my broker now I use Sierra charts well my amp is my brokerage account but it's linked to Sierra charts which Sierra charts you can actually control your max loss and profit and all that stuff so I implemented that so I can prevent myself from even doing that in the future so that's all taken care of um, but the just that re one revenge trade brought me down you know significant amount and without that it would have I would actually be close to green right now uh, without uh, revenge trading so this is pretty much how the trading week past just this week went in the small count um, but I am confident in my skills and ability to to get that account back up into green territory this week by just sticking to my plan you know having my routine sticking to it when I wake up wake up early you know at least an hour before the market opens do your morning rituals prepare for the day look at the charts don't take any trades until you can analyze the markets fully you know what are the charts telling you are there is there any news out there that you should be aware of when are what's the economic events for today have have a plan in place before you decide to just enter some kind of trade that's most likely you're going to regret it because you could have could have used that excess capital or margin that you allow yourself to take an even better trade once once you can actually see where the levels are so and i to kind of fix my fix that problem already where I, I limit the number of contracts i only have two ever and i limit on my broker account now to a max loss of 250 dollars so no matter what my my uh, Sierra charts or my broker will stop me out so it won't allow my account to go even further which is really important it's kind of like the stop step trade stop top step trader program which is one of the reasons why I like that they're uh, the way that they teach you so much because if you don't do this stuff you can kind of I mean you have the choice of keep letting it go against you or it's up to you to actually enter the position which can be hard sometimes or exit the position so um we can take a look really quick at some of the trades that I took and some of the comments I had based on you know how the trade performed and I'll show you guys the equity curve I mean in the blog post if you're reading it I posted the picture of it and um, so I have I already told you guys my plan for the upcoming week and I'll probably make another video next weekend to talk about you know how how the trading went after after this uh, little drawdown that I've experienced so let's take a look at the Excel spreadsheet really quick. All right, guys. So I just want to show you really quick the equity curve. This is from, yeah, 10 days total. So this day right here was the big one. Caused this dip right here that I mentioned uh, adding to a loser revenge trading. That's what will happen. So right now the way the account sits, it's down about $420. I think this calculation might be off a little bit because of the commissions that I have on the spreadsheet, but it counts at 25,000 or 20 or $2,580 and some change. So there's about $900 cushion still left before, you know, I, it hits the drawdown that I have, which is $1,500. And I have everything calculated here. 
You can see it on the chart as well. So the trades, I just want to jump into really quick. First, the stats, you'll notice that the average winner is smaller than the average loser. That's mainly because I'm a scalper and you know, needing to hold the trades a little bit longer to have a bigger profit for each trade. But the uh, win-loss rate isn't too good because of the reasons that I mentioned to you. Usually it's around 80%, 75-80%. So there's some things I have to work on. And um, you can see starting off really good the first few days. And then th this trade right here, and the row 16 right here, this one and this one alone were revenge trades and were averaging down on losers. So just those two trades, $466 loss. So imagine if not breaking those rules, you would be green on the account just barely. You know, you wouldn't have lost any money. And even some of these other trades were not good either. So um, this one was a revenge trading with an extra contract. That's another no-no. Can't do that. Luckily, it was only a six tick loss, so it's just $158. But this one right here was averaging down on a loser, and that's when we had kind of a bigger pullback where we tested, I believe, 2,900, maybe a little bit lower. So eventually did U-turn, but the, en the entry was just wrong. And instead of getting out for a smaller loss and resetting, um, averaging down, you can actually see, I believe, what the trade looked like. Yeah. See. Originally was a long here at this fib and you can see we lost it. So it should have been stopped out instantly and should have looked to for another re-entry somewhere, you know, instead of averaging down. But um done and over with, know what need know what I need to do, know what I need to not do, um, to to increase the win loss ratio, to increase the profits per trade, per win, and keep the losses to a minimum. But if you look at every other loss besides those two trades, it's around $100 every time. You know, it's it's very minimal. You know, the trade's not working. So going into next week, uh, looking at uh, every trade I take, I want to make, you really can't make this rule, but I'm going to go, uh, my goal is to make at least what I'm risking. So if I risk 100 bucks, I want to make at least 100 bucks. But um you have to take what the market gives you. So I have to just focus on making good trades and then the profits will come. So this is just an insight into, into what the spreadsheet looks like. I'll leave a link in the notes in the uh, comments below or not the comment, the description of the video, just so you guys can follow it. I update it every time I take a trade so you guys can see the progress that's going on. Um, and then, uh, I will make be making another video probably next weekend, depending on how much I can trade this week because I do have do have a full time job during the day, so I might not be able to trade more than an hour or two hours a day if that. So I'm gonna do as much as I can and see if I can uh, get this this account back up where it should be, you know, and well into the green. But do want to say that trading an account, a small account, is really it is difficult. Because mainly not because of the emotional thing, but when you trade a small account, the entries have to be very accurate um, because you can't risk that much per trade. As you can see, like I, the trades that I actually had my stop in place where I got stopped out and didn't re-enter, add an extra contract, it's around $100 every time. So I can only really risk about $100 a trade every time. So the entries have to be very accurate. But that's what I'm going to be focusing on. And with my, when I do follow my plan, I am able to get extremely, extremely accurate entries as long as I don't, you know, as long as I'm patient and wait for the market to come to me. And that's, that's going to be my major focus this week. You know, so I will, I will talk to you guys soon. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure to click my logo that's popping up now. And I will be back with another small account challenge update next weekend. Until then, guys, trade well, and I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.